After a one-week break, the Seahawks and the rest of the NFL returned with replacement players, some a bit more athletic than others. These untested players would have to be molded into a cohesive unit quickly, and it was here that the Seattle coaching staff pulled off a minor miracle. Chuck Knox's assistants proved their abilities to teach were as sharp as ever, turning butchers and bakers into football players. In the span of just 10 days, the Seahawks coaches were able to construct the team and ended up playing perhaps the most exciting game during the strike schedule, a 24-20 comeback over the replacement Dolphins. The win would prove crucial to Seattle's playoff hopes, and when the strike finally ended, a familiar face returned in time to help the Seahawks gain another victory in Detroit. With the snap, drops back to pass, fires one fourth, the end zone, Large has got it, touchdown Seahawks. Eric Lane and Boyce Green, the split backs behind Jeff Kemp on first down, Kemp back to pass, has a look, fires one in the end zone, Large has got it, same play as before, touchdown Seahawks. Kemp back looking for Large and throws to him in the corner of the end zone, touchdown Seahawks. And the Seahawks are making it look easy. By early in the third period, Largent had already shattered team records for catches and yardage and could easily have had more. But the classy receiver chose instead to take himself out of the game. It was really fun. It's always fun to run and catch the ball and score. But at the same time, you know, you feel a little bit um, funny, you know, just because of the situation. Uh, but, you know, if, if, if I'd have caught three passes and, and we'd have won, it would have been fine because the bottom line was we wanted to get out of here with a, with a victory and, and uh, carry on. Knox's Seahawks carried on quite nicely in the first game after the strike. Showing no ill effects from the four-week layoff, Seattle's veterans blasted the Raiders 35-13, the Seahawks' first victory in Los Angeles since 1983. If there was anything good about those four weeks was that we stuck together as a team and we learned a lot about each other and uh, how much we really want to go after something. And I think that really is going to help us in the long run throughout this whole season. With the end of the strike, Seahawk fans were eager to turn up the Kingdom decibels and cheer on their heroes. For visitors, the place became Thunderdome as the loud noise battered their eardrums while sparking the players on Seattle's special teams. Punter Ruben Rodriguez and headhunters Sam Merriman, Tony Burse, Eric Lane, Kerry Justin, Randall Morris, Wilbur Strozier, David Hollis, Mark Moore, and M.L. Johnson all made contributions on the Seahawks special teams. Help also came from Seattle's veteran defensive line, anchored by nose tackle Joe Nash, number 72. and six-year veteran Jeff Bryant, number 77, kept busy at the point of attack, leaving rush lanes free for defensive end Jacob Green, number 79, the team's leading sacker and a Pro Bowl starter for the very first time. While Green, Alonzo Mitts, Randy Edwards, Roland Barbe, and Wes Dove handled play up front, Seattle's linebackers cut down additional pursuit angles. Bruce Schultz, Keith Butler, Greg Gaines, and rookie Tony Woods were solid role players in the Seahawks' complex defensive scheme.
liability in seasons past, opponents painfully learned that Seattle's linebacking unit now had far greater impact. Safety Kenny Easley, number 45, paced the secondary as the team leader in interceptions and gained the fifth Pro Bowl start of his career. Other big plays were turned in by Eugene Robinson, Terry Taylor, Patrick Hunter, Paul Moyer, and Melvin Jenkins, a secondary that covered tightly and hit fiercely. Seattle's linebacking core featured the two biggest defensive stories of 1987. The luck of the lottery brought Oklahoma All-American Brian Bosworth to King County, where he promptly began carving out a reputation. Bosworth's flamboyance attracted immediate attention. His unconventional ways and showmanship were new to most fans, who found there was no middle ground with the Boz. He was either loved or reviled, but Brian Bosworth could never be ignored. Pitch the ball to Anderson, power sweep right side, a block from Van Horn, he cuts in behind it out to the 40, and gets dumped by Bosworth and Nash. Bosworth steals the ball away, takes off down the other way, stumbling at the 15, 10, the 5, down, down, down to one. one. Holy Bosworth smoke. took the ball away. But behind the flashy image was a dedicated young athlete constantly seeking to improve himself. I'm going to try to increase uh, my understanding of the game as quickly as I can, but it's still going to take time. I'm very, very tough on myself and an extreme perfectionist and, and extremely critical of every performance that I go out and do. I, I've never been able to find a performance that I'm happy with. But players like Ken easily expect good things from Bosworth. He's adding a lot of character to our football team and a lot of good things to our defense. As soon as he becomes comfortable with uh, the defensive scheme that we run and his particular role within the defense, uh, he will be an impact player in this league for a long time to come. For the first time in three years, the Seahawks were back in the playoffs, but the setting was not the home sweet dome of Seattle but hostile Houston deep in the unfriendly heart of Texas. Our whole season comes down to one play. Do you understand? You got to hold on to the If you ever sold out in your life, this is the time to do it right now. Hold on to your dreams, Now is the time. Special right. I know you can do it. Hold on to your dreams. I know you can do it. Let's go. One, two, three. Oh. There's Moon back. First pass today. Schultz comes on a blitz. Moon lets one fly deep up the right side for Gibbons. Picks off on the 20-yard line. Playing without an injured Kurt Warner, Seattle used the early turnover to jump to a 7-0 first period advantage. But it would be the Seahawks' last comforting moment of the game, as the two teams continuously battled for the lead. Midway through the game, Houston led by six, but then the AFC's best punt returner stole the spotlight. Seahawks have Bobby Joe back. Gossett gets the kick away. Bobby Joe Edmonds runs up, fields on the fly at the 28, up to the 30-yard line, 35 up the right side of the 40, breaking away, and could be on his way down the sideline. He's at the Houston 30, one man to beat, and down he goes inside the 20-yard line. That's a big play, man. Big play. That's the way to go. Norm Johnson's two field goals not at the game at 13. But by late in the fourth quarter, the Oilers were ahead by a touchdown. The defense would now have to stand its ground. Seahawks have a chance now. They'll take over first down and 10 out at the 20. And the Seahawks now with 147 to go have one timeout to use. 80 yards away. 
Seattle's finest hour of 1987, Dave Craig led the Seahawks on a tension-packed final drive, battling a hostile crowd and a hungry Houston defense. One time, one time, one time. Craig again operating out of the shotgun. Has time, throws one in the end zone. Oh, touchdown, Seahawks the largest. <laughs> Although the Seahawks have been outgained all day, regulation play ended in a 20-20 tie. And in overtime, Seattle appeared to be on the verge of stealing away with the victory. Moon drops back to pass. A lot of time. Throws one. Deflected high in the air. Young, did he come up with it at the 42? We're waiting to see. Sure looked like an interception to me. But remember, this is a playoff game as well. So that means they've got maybe a couple of more cameras trained on the action. Further review by the replay of The decision would advance Houston and not Seattle to the next round. But although 1987 ended in disappointment, the Seahawks had made it back to the playoffs. In the five years since Chuck Knox has coached the franchise, only five other NFL teams have won more games. The Seahawks have won in the past and are planning on winning in seasons to come. We want you, the player, to come to practice and get a smile on your face and let's go to work and let's give an honest day's work and let's come out of the shoot on Sunday and play as hard as you can play and give the very, very best that you can give. And we always say the two great things about professional football, one is winning, two's getting paid. That is the basis upon which everything else is built burning the desire on the part of the individual player to want to do the very, very best that he can do. In 1987, the Seattle Seahawks successfully pledged to go back to the playoffs. And that is exactly where the Seattle Seahawks expect to be in 1988.